This is the second part of lecture number five, control system design using frequency response methods. We were talking about using frequency response methods to design control systems and really we're talking about all the different aspects of frequency uh, response and its analysis that might be used for this. And we also talked a little bit about these second order systems um, because that's what we're going to be mainly worried about when we go back and use uh, these frequency response methods to actually design controllers, even for systems that might have more degrees of freedom or uh, be more complicated than that. One thing we can use um, in describing what happens um, in control system design for using frequency response methods are Nichols plots and so-called M and N plots. Um, these kinds of plots are actually pretty useful, but um, I'm going to omit them here because uh, we can actually get away without having to use them uh, for designing the kinds of controllers that we have. There are good reasons to use them. Basically, a Nichols plot is, is similar to a uh, the Nyquist plot, except that the, the radial axis, the radius, is actually the log, so it's in decibels, and then the M and N plots are uh, sort of a toroidal kind of plot that's uh, frankly quite confusing. Okay. If you want, you can use these plots in MATLAB and um, you can actually learn how to use them and what they're all about in MATLAB, probably the most easiest um, in comparison to other methods. So let's go on. The frequency response and steady state error. When we talk about steady state error and frequency response methods, I mean, after all, the input that is being provided into the system is a sinusoidal input. So strictly speaking, um, the, the input is, is never really steady state unless, of course, an omega goes to zero. And so if we, if we look at a Bode plot, as omega goes to zero, we can, we can determine the system type, for example, and actually determine a lot of other things as well. So let's take a look here for a moment. As limit as s goes to zero, g, g, g of s, presuming that it's a unit feedback system, and see what happens. We have gain on the top, and then we have s to the n on the bottom. The pure integrations, there are all that appear near s equals zero or j omega equals zero. So these s to the n values are on the bottom, and then the the um, you have a gain k on the top. All the others would pretty much drop out because you'd have the, the poles and the zeros um, of equal value. Now we can find the steady state error for a type zero system from a Bode plot, and what you'll notice is as we go through this, we have type zero now. But then here, before long, we'll actually have, um, instead of this, we'll have type 1, and then we'll actually replace this with type 2, and you could actually make type 3 and so forth. And unfortunately, um, the method by which we find the steady state error from a Bode plot depends upon the type. So you have to know the order of the system first, and if we say that the order is type 0, okay, if so the order is related back to a type zero system, then the slope of the magnitude near j omega uh, equals zero is zero in this particular case for a Bode plot. And we know that if the slope here is, is equal to zero, that the, the amplitude of the response isn't changing at very low frequency until we reach the first, uh, first pole or zero that's lying out here. And uh, only at that point will it start changing. Remember that if we have an S here, then the Bode plot will start declining or increasing depending on whether that S is in the numerator or denominator. At any rate, a type zero system, we don't have any of these S's by themselves. They're always S plus something. And so the slope of this, the magnitude, is actually zero over here towards the left or when omega is near zero. That being said, the slope near the, okay, so we've got that part. And for this case, the magnitude of the response at J omega equals zero or near zero is a static error constant, case Kp. Okay. And so then we get the steady state error from a step input as just the magnitude of the, the input in uh, the S, S uh, plane, or the, uh, the Laplace transform uh, input divided by one plus K sub P. So in other words, what we're really saying is that this distance here, that's 20 log Kp. And from this, we can get the static error constant directly. We know the static error constant, and we can get the step error. Very nice and simple.
So for a type 0 system, it's not so bad. So the step input steady state error is inversely proportional to the magnitude of the system response at or near j omega equals 0. The important point of it is, is that it doesn't matter where you look here as long as it's below that first pole or 0 that causes it to turn. If the slope of the magnitude near j omega 0 is minus 20 dB per decade, the system's type 1. And so we can't make that assumption any longer. We know that we have um, an S in here. that's causing the system to actually, um, as a pole, that's actually causing it to decrease by 20 dB per decade, as a typical Bode plot would do. And so the system is really rather type 1. Okay. So we can't just say, all right, what the value near, near here is, this doesn't have any particular value. I can't look at this value or that value because the slope is not, is not zero. So the magnitude of j omega equals 1, if we look over here, this, sorry about that, look over here at this, this value of omega equals 1 right here, okay, then we go and look and see what the, the magnitude is actually at this value, it's actually the velocity ramp error constant, k sub v divided by j omega itself. And you'll notice here, if you look carefully, that it's not... It's not here where the actual Bode plot is located. It's actually up here where if we extend this line out, if we extend this line out, it's actually here. The distance from this point down to the zero line, that is 20 log kV divided by j omega. Okay. Well, j omega right, is one here, so that's actually 20 log kV. That's similar to the value we, the way we found it before, and this kV then will give us the steady state error as a consequence of a ramp input. Okay. Another way to find it is to if we extend this magnitude line from the left of omega 2 until it reaches 0 dB at omega 1 right here. Let's get rid of all this. So if we take this line and go from from here left, and extend it out, extend it out, extend it out, extend it out, go to this particular point, okay, at omega 1, the frequency of omega 1 is equal to kV, and this is a much easier way to do it. So omega 1 is equal to kV. It's the value we want. So then, you can take kV and go and find your e sub s as ramp. Okay, so if you were going to actually do it for me, I would prefer to see it in the latter way. This way is far easier. For a type 2 system, this, and the way to identify a type 2 system really is to look at the body plot and see, all right, that's going to be minus 40 dB per decade. And unfortunately, yet again, it's some sort of different kind of method. We can't determine where the plot is actually occurring here at the left to give us some sort of estimate of the steady state error. And we can't use the method we talked about there. Uh, here either, um, but we can use this particular point, but what I would do is to actually go back and look and say extend this line this leftmost line out here to to where it reaches a 0 dB line this frequency, we'll call that omega sub a so omega sub a is equal to the square root of the acceleration error constant. So k sub a is omega a squared, and this will give us our steady state error due to a parabolic input.
So, the Nyquist criterion is a useful way to determine stability, absolute and relative. Once you determine the gain margin, the phase margins, and all of that. But the Nyquist plot in and of itself, you can use that information to go back and use the Bode plots. Bode plots maybe are easier to draw. Okay, and they can suggest the gain and phase margins of the systems. And together, they really are quite a useful alternative to the root locus method. One thing you want to watch out for is uh, complications with uh, numerators and then systems with types larger than one that can make the plotting uh, very difficult.